Vehicle to load or V2L, you've heard a lot about it, but what is it? And can the MG ZS EV do it? Stay watching to find out. Vehicle to load or V2L means using your high voltage battery, in the case of the MG ZS EV, the 400 volt battery that's used to power the car, to actually power smaller appliances via an inverter. So today we're going to show you guys our V2L project we've been working on with our MG ZS EV to power a 400 watt DC to AC inverter and run some appliances like our coffee grinder here. Now obviously the MG ZS EV doesn't come standard with vehicle to load capability. As we mentioned, there is vehicles that will be on the market in the not too distant future that will have this capability built in out of the factory, but we decided we'd do a DIY project and install it in our MG to just make it a little bit more fun when we go camping. Hi everyone, welcome to another video from Electric Car Australia, the Aussie YouTube channel where we showcase living and driving an electric car as a daily driver and also talk about sustainable living stuff. And if you'd like some personalised one-on-one -on -one information on electric cars, please visit our website, Electric Car Advice Australia. Well, here in Brisbane, unfortunately, we've also been in lockdown like Sydney and Melbourne, unfortunately. So we've been unable to get out on the road and do any EV videos for you. However, this is a long awaited one on our, or one of the projects that we've been working on here with our MG ZS EV, and it's vehicle to load or V2L. So if you're into electric vehicles, you've probably heard lots of these acronyms around. There's also uh, V2G, bi-directional charging, etc. And this is a lot of exciting stuff that is on the way. We won't get into all that today. Unfortunately, the video would be way too long. So today we're just going to stick with vehicle to load. Now look, as far as I know, there's not any EVs on the market as yet, at least not in Australia, that have this as standard. Um, there's a lot on the way. Um, the Hyundai Ionic 5 is obviously one um, that's been touted and in the media. Um, that's got the little PowerPoint or GPO inside the car to provide the 240 volt or 120 volt electricity. And another one that I'm a big fan of is the Ford F-150 Lightning that's recently been um, introduced to the market by Ford. Um, you can take, they're taking orders for that over in the US and that's got multiple um, plugs in it or power points, um, which is perfect for, you know, tradies, etc., with power tools and stuff. But today, what I wanted to do was show you guys a project that we've been working on where we've put a, or we've made the ability to do vehicle to load with our MG ZS EV. Now, I guess I should say, firstly, if you're going to attempt this, you do need to know a little bit about uh, basic sort of electronics and electrical stuff. Um, we're certainly not advocating that everybody jumps in and does this with their car. It's certainly a personal opinion, um, or sorry, a, a personal um, uh, choice, because as you'd imagine, there could be implications with warranties and all that sort of thing down the track. Totally up to you um, whether you try this or not. So I guess the reason that I wanted to have a look at this vehicle to load was that um, I've previously had it set up in a Ford F-150 that I used to travel around Australia. Um, I had this little inverter, which is a Latronics 400 watt 12 volt in inverter. So what that does, that inverts DC battery power basically to AC. So that's a normal Australian power point in there provides 240 volt power. And I had this connected to a dual 
battery uh, set up in my F-150 and when I travel around Australia I run um, a standard little bar fridge so it wasn't a, a camping fridge it was just a normal little 240 volt bar fridge. Um, I run some lighting, I use an electric razor, all that sort of stuff um, off it and, and this little guy was fantastic. Um, I'll pop a link to Latronics in the show notes. Um, these are pure sign inverters. Um, they're not, they have a transformer in them. Um, so my personal opinion, I've had these guys for over 20 years and you cannot kill these. They're locally made up in Caloundra here in Queensland. Um, so yeah, thoroughly recommend these guys. And they have a surge rating of about 300%. So even though this one's 400 watts, um, it'll surge to about uh, 13, um, 12 or 1300 watts for five seconds um, to start your loads. So if you've watched any of our other videos, you'll know that we do do quite a lot of camping. So it's just handy um, to have one of these in your vehicle. Um, we're not big on running TVs and that sort of stuff while we're camping, but if you do want to um, use any 12 volt uh, accessories or gear, um, this is a great way to do it. So let's have a look at, at what I've done. So this is the 12 volt battery obviously in the ZS EV. So every EV has a 12 volt battery and that runs stuff like your stereo inside the car, um, your headlights, all the general 12 volt stuff. So again, when you're working on this sort of stuff, um, be really careful what you're doing. Um, I suggest you use uh, insulated tools, etc., and um, and really take your time. Make sure you've got uh, space around you, you're not going to trip, etc. because the last thing you want to be doing is um, arcing out these, um, these terminals here. Work on um, one at a time and just use general uh, common sense and, and safety perspectives when you're doing it. So to show you guys a little bit closer, um, this cable here is the, the one that I've added. So you can see down in there, so given that this is a, I'll just grab some notes here, given that this one is a 400 watt inverter, that works out at AC at about 1.74 amps. It draws AC, that's if we were running something at the full 400 watts. So at 230 volts, that's 1.74 amps. So because we're pulling from 12 volt DC, this one here as our, um, power source that pulls about 36.8 amps DC at 12 volt so what I've done I've configured this entire system here as a 50 amp system so that gives us a little bit of fat and um, and make sure that we're not going to overload anything so keep in mind um, one of the things you'll need to, to think about is these have a DC to DC converter to charge this battery. So normally in a uh, fossil fuel, petrol or diesel engine, um, you'd have a flywheel and you'd have an alternator and you'd have a belt and that would be charging your 12 volt battery all the time. In an EV, you don't have that. So what you do is have a DC to DC converter. So the big high traction or high voltage traction battery underneath the car, the one that actually powers the electric motor to run the car, it charges this battery, the 12 volt battery, via a DC to DC converter. So what we need to do is ensure, number one, when you're drawing a current, so if you're running anything like your, your coffee grinder here in my case, or your TV or your lighting, number one, what you need to do is make sure you've got the MG turned on. So you need to have it in full ready mode as if you are about to drive off because by doing that, that activates or energizes the DC-DC converter and that'll keep this battery charged. Because if you don't do that, you'll quite quickly flatten this battery. And if you're pulling, you know, 36 amps or so, which is the full capacity of, of this inverter, continuous, you would flatten this battery in no time. And if you flatten a 12 volt battery in a EV, you're not going anywhere. So just be careful if you are planning to do something like this, don't put a dirty grade inverter here because you want to run some big high powered um, piece of 240 volt kit and forget that your DC to DC converter may not be able to keep up with that current draw. So if you're sucking more power out of this inverter 
then the DC-DC converter can put back into this battery, again, you're going to flatten your battery. So it's really only for reasonably lowish sort of current. So I stuck to 50 amps. Um, I'm not 100% sure what capacity the MG's DC to DC converter is, but I'm sure it would be at least 50 amps because it's got to run the heating system, headlights, um, all that sort of stuff. So I'm quite comfortable that 50 amps would um, cover it. I put the terminal on that one rather than this one um, because it just fitted a lot neater and I'll show you some of the lugs I used uh, shortly. So that's a 90 degree lug, so it fits nice and neat down in there. I didn't need to uh, loosen this one off at all, so that stayed um, nice and tight. And what I've done to make sure I didn't lose any of my uh, settings or whatever, I very carefully removed that and I maintained contact between all these other things. Um, so yeah, very carefully done that. You can see I've run the cable neatly down the bottom and I've also secured it, you won't be able to see it, but right down in there I've secured that with a um, zip tie because it's very important when you're cabling like this, the last thing you want is cables flapping around and rubbing on things, etc. because um, that's a recipe for disaster. So nice and secure, neatly around there. This one comes into a little 50 amp MIDI um, fuse and I'll show you a screenshot of uh, that one there. It's not 100% waterproof, but um, it's unlikely to get a lot of water up in here. It does have a little lid um, on it. And again, I've secured that there with a, um, a, a uh, zip tie to make sure that that's nice and neat and secure. Um, conveniently, there's a little hole down in there. It looks like the MG battery tray is made to take a bigger battery. Um, so there's a bolt hole there for a, a bigger battery. So I could just neatly tie that off there. This Anderson plug here, and again, I'll show you guys some of the gear I used shortly. So that's a um, 50 amp Anderson plug. Um, I bought a separate dust cover. So when I'm not using it, I, I put the dust cover in there to keep it nice and clean. And when that one's unplugged from the inverter, it just tucks neatly down there. So basically no cables flapping around. Um, and again, I'll put a photo in to, to show you guys what it looks like. Um, like to hear your opinions in the comments so pop them in but I think it looks pretty neat um, and there's the the negative terminal there so um, again I put a, a right angled um, lug on that one and that one I did actually put on to the terminal because it was the most convenient spot if I put the lug out here I thought it was sort of sticking out so yeah that's up to you I just thought that looked the neatest um, and then obviously we just plug our inverter in when we want to use it. So the inverter doesn't sit there all the time. Um, that's portable and oh, these things are heavy. They uh, have a big transformer in them. Um, that's, as I said earlier, you can't kill these things. Really good quality, um, but because they've got a big copper transformer, they are very heavy. Now, you could put this wherever you like, um, depending on your lead length. You could put that outside your car, etc. But I think that's a convenient spot. You can actually close the bonnet. Um, see if it's raining or whatever, you can close the bonnet and it's nicely tucked in there. You'll see there I've just cut a piece of rubber to go under that. And there's two reasons for that. The first one is it stops it sliding around. And the second one is that there is actually your AC charger. So when you plug in, um, at home or into a destination charger to charge. Um, that's your AC charger. So there's a lot of electronics and I'm assuming copper coils and things in that. So this rubber mat provides um, a little bit of insulation as well between you know this the copper coils in this one and what's potentially in that. Um, so yeah, good idea to put a put a bit of rubber there. And then you can just run your cable down through there. So if you're, you're camping stationary, um, you could run your cable out underneath. Um, obviously up to you, but um, yeah, look, at the end of the day, I think it's a quite neat little package. Um, again, you don't want to go too crazy with your inverter um, and try and suck too much current out of here. It's not designed for that. It's just designed to give you a little bit of um, 240 volt power for those bits and pieces. Um, that you might want to take if you're camping. Um, you can recharge cordless drills, etc. Um, if you've got a low powered um, power tools, etc. Again, you could you could run those off there. So let's have a quick look at some of the bits and pieces we used in our DIY MG ZSE V 
let's call it an upgrade to vehicle to load capability. So these are quite a handy little bit of gear. These are uh, the crimping tools. So these um, are used for um, crimping, properly crimping the um, electrical lugs. Um, as you can see, I think there's a price on there. They're about $50 from um, Trade Tools up here in, in Brisbane. So very handy bit of gear. You use those to crimp the lugs. So these are your big electrical lugs. Now look, a tip on these, there's, there's a lot of qualities of these guys around. Um, so as you can see, there's different, I call it meat, but there's a different um, thickness of metal between the drill hole there and the edge of the lug. And obviously these are a lot bigger lugs than what I used. Um, but when you're looking at buying lugs, make sure there's a decent amount of metal between that internal bolt hole and the edge. Check the thickness of the lug there. And also make sure this shaft here is long enough because some of them, the cheaper ones, are really short and um, it's not enough space to actually crimp them properly and get them to, to stay secure. You'll notice this lug has like a balloon shape on the end. That's called a bell mouth and they're really handy as well because that makes it a lot easier to put your cables on. So these are some of the bits and pieces and, and that's what I mentioned there before. You can see those lugs, there's not much meat on those. So that's a 10 mil bolt hole, but there's not a lot of metal on the edge of that. So yeah, I wouldn't really use, recommend using those. These are the ones that I used on the car. So they're a six mil hole, 10 square millimeter cable, and they were perfect. Lots of meat on them, little bell, bell mouth, so nice and easy to get, get the cable in. Um, again, that's a good good quality one. So yeah, they're your electrical lugs. Um, that's your dust cover. So that's the one that pops in the end of the Anderson cap. So you buy them separately. Um, that's a good idea if you're camping, um, going through mud, that sort of stuff in four wheel drives to put those on. And these are your Anderson plugs. Um, so these are universal. They're sort of a male, female um, one, but I don't know how to say it, they, they both work each way. So you don't need to get a special male and a special female, they're interchangeable, um, but they do go in a set way. So you can't mix your polarities up. So you'll see there it has um, positive and negative. And if you wire these correctly, there's no way you can plug them in the wrong way, because as you can see, there's a certain pattern um, that, that they go in. And if you buy them in a set like that, you get the lugs and the plug, um, and there's different size lugs depending on the cables you're using. Um, these were the ones that, that I used. Um, so grey 50 amp 6AWG, um, so that's the size of the, um, the cable that goes in. So look, that's about it guys. I really hope that was helpful. If you've got any questions or comments or um, ideas, please pop them in the uh, comments section. We do read all the comments and we appreciate all the engagement that you guys um, give us. It, it helps us learn more and it helps uh, share it with the EV community here in Australia. If you haven't, please subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate it. Hit that bell icon. Um, the more people that subscribe to the channel, the more YouTube recognises that people like the channel and they promote it into more people's feeds. So that helps us get out and about. And we're really aiming for that 1,000 subscribers when YouTube will share a little bit of their ad revenue with us, which would be absolutely fantastic. For everyone that's in a lockdown or suffering, long suffering through this uh, health pandemic we're having at the moment, hang in there guys. Um, there's got to be light at the end of the tunnel here in Australia. We're getting those vaccines in arms slowly but surely. Um, so eventually we'll get out of lockdown and hopefully we'll be able to get back to normal. So please stay safe and keep watching. We've got lots more exciting EV and sustainable living videos coming. And the quicker we get out of lockdown, the quicker we'll be able to get out on the road and make some more road trip ones for you. Take care, stay safe.